Well, praise the Lord, and welcome back to uh, Sunday night service. And uh, tonight we're going to be getting into the scriptures and the Second John, and finding out some more things that the Lord has has for us. And uh, also uh, some prayer uh, updates tonight. Uh, good news on on the uh, prayer update tonight. Uh, well, Chris, who we've been praying for, who had uh, COVID nineteen, uh, she's actually doing better. Uh, her blood pressure is stabilized. Her septic shock is gone. She's testing negative for COVID-19. Uh, please continue to keep her in prayer for healing. And so uh, the Lord has uh, begun to do a, a healing work in her. And thank you for praying and continue to pray uh, for complete healing uh, for Chris and, and also uh, for her husband. But most especially through all of this, we we'll pray that they come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior that God would be glorified in all of this. And we give God the glory and thanks tonight for, uh, it wasn't uh, but just uh, yesterday that the doctors mm -hmm. held out a uh, little hope for her recovery. What am amazing things that God can do. Amen. So we just praise God and thank him for, for working on her behalf. And we just put uh, before the Lord, you know, all things. You know, if you have uh, prayer needs tonight, I just ask that you would put them before God. God is faithful. He does answer prayer. He doesn't always answer prayer in the way that you think that it should be answered, but he answers prayer. So get your prayers before the Lord, and, and then when he answers that prayer, you know, make sure that you're content. Give it God the thanks in all things. And, you know, be grateful to the Lord for all the things that he's doing in your lives and in the lives of others. Please continue to keep these guys, both Chris and her husband, in prayer. Amen? Well, let's go to the Lord in, in just a thanksgiving and prayer right now. Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for the wonderful, miraculous work that you're doing in Chris. And Lord, I pray first and foremost that she comes to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior through all of this, both her and her husband, Lord. Please lead them to you. God, that Christ may be glorified. And we give you glory and thanks for you are so wonderful to us. You answer prayer and we thank you for that. Oh God, you're so good to us. We give you thanks and praise in all things. And Lord, we ask that you would protect your people, that you would surround them, Lord, with peace. Let them go through the, the time of testing with, a, with just a calm assurance that you have everything well in hand. And Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we just ask that your will be done in, in our lives and in every situation. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, praise God. <clears throat> So tonight we're going to continue on our, our study through the book of 2 John. Last week we, um, we were worked through verse 7, talking about for many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. This, is, um, this doctrine that was brought in, as we talked about, um, is the, uh, for, from the Gnostics. The Gnostics brought, introduced a doctrine that said that Jesus came in the spirit, didn't come in the flesh, and it, and it was you know a false doctrine, a false teaching. And we talked about how there are many false teachings, and unfortunately, Gnosticism itself um, is still around today. It's still, um, it's still uh, looked to today in, in a lot of uh, different ways, but it's still in existence today. And uh, you can actually... Uh, if you wanted a good example in modern uh, movies about uh, how blatant and blasphemous Gnosticism is, well, it was in The Da Vinci Code. And The Da Vinci Code was, is a blasphemous movie. I'm not recommending it at all. Uh, but it, it totally twists and, uh, and perverts the gospel, really does. So, you know, it, it's certainly not, there's no shred of truth in it. Um, but uh, that was a a good example of modern uh, Gnosticism. That's a really good example. Um, okay, so let's continue to look at the scriptures. Uh, let's look at uh, 2 John uh, verse 8. It says, Look to yourselves, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. You know, we need to make sure in our lives, we need to make sure that we are on guard that we we are on guard in our in our lives against deception, on guard against these things that are not like Christ. They look right, they sound right, they tickle your ears, you know, but they're not right. You see, uh, today I'm really seeing it, uh, and it's really coming out in a lot of ways. But 
there's like this um, in America, and I'm not speaking for other countries because other countries have different unique problems, but I say in America, we've almost tried to merge um, on one hand uh, patriotism with Christianity and then putting them in a kind of a, a mixture, you know? And I just want to tell you, yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a patriotic about your nation. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's totally fine. I mean, if God placed you in a nation, then being thanking God, you know, always that he puts you there, that you were born in that place. Thank him for that. Give him the glory. Amen. But don't be mistaken to think that that patriotism you have for your nation is Christianity. Even in this great nation that we live in and thank God for it, um, patriotism is no substitute for biblical Christianity, the Bible, okay? Because you could be patriotic and still not know Jesus and end up in hell, all right? You could, you could be, you know, doing all the things that, you know, you could have, you could have your, the Constitution, you have the Bill of Rights, you could quote these guys, right? But if you don't have Jesus Christ, then you got a major problem. So don't confuse those two. You can be a Christian and still be patriotic, of course. No problem with that. But it is not a given that because you're patriotic that you're a Christian. Not a given. Because you need to know Jesus Christ. And you know, in Christ, there's no Jew, Gentile, bond or free. Male, female, we're all one in the body of Christ. Right? So being from whatever country you are, being whatever whatever background you have those backgrounds and the, those nationalities and stuff like that in Christ we're all one we're one one body in Christ no matter what country you originated from right because you were born again into the kingdom of God so you know keep things in perspective okay don't get deceived into thinking that that uh, in somehow you out there fighting for, for your rights is the same thing as fighting for the gospel. It's not the same thing. Those are two different things, actually. One is a, is a civic thing, and one is spiritual. One is our life, the gospel. That's our life. Amen? I'm not saying that you shouldn't do the other, engaging in politics, engaging in, um, in voting and all that. You should... You know, you have a civic responsibility. You need to do those things. But re remember, remember that when you are out there doing all these things, that the people that are on the opposite side of that, that belief system from you, whatever, whatever side of the aisle you happen to be on, you know, those people need Jesus too. Just like people on your side of the aisle need Jesus. All humanity needs Jesus Christ. And us setting all these boundaries and divisions, um, it actually helps one person, Satan. It helps him. Right? Because he's he, he loves division. He loves division in the world. He loves division in the church. That's why it's so vitally important that we stay grounded in the Word of God and we stay focused on Jesus Christ. The mission has not changed. Get the gospel to the whole world. That's the mission. I keep talking about that because it keeps coming up. And I, I see Christians fighting and bickering over nonsense and things that don't matter. And so you got to confront it head on. And you got to say, look, all of that other stuff, yes, that's there. But that's not our mission. Our mission is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our mission. And that's where we better stay grounded and focused in. Because you know what? I, I can tell you this right now. God's not going to evaluate you on the basis of whether you are a good American or a good Canadian or a good Mexican or a good Spaniard, a good Frenchman, a good Englishman. He's not going to he's not going to evaluate you on that. He's going to evaluate you on this. Do you know him? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? 
Have you confessed to him your sin? Have you, have you repented, confessed your sins to him? Ask forgiveness. You know, have you repented of your sin? Are you expecting that because you hold your nation's flag, that's going to grant you entrance into heaven? Because it won't. No matter what nation you come from. No matter what your nation was founded on. You know, uh, good, be good to take a lesson from the, the Jewish people. It would be very good for you to pay attention to what happens in Scripture. They're God's chosen people, yet there was a time that they didn't walk with Him, and it did not turn out well when they were not walking with Him. Thank God He, he doesn't give up. Thank God. But when He says He's done, you read Jeremiah. When God has had enough, you, you, you might want to definitely have the fear of the Lord. So cut all the unnecessary scrapping about nonsense and get back to the gospel, okay? All right. Don't lose your full reward. Don't lose it because it's not worth it. Just preach the word. Exhort them. Encourage them. Love them. Love them enough to give them the truth of the word of God. Somebody asked me just the other day if I watched uh, a certain uh, news or commentator or something like that, political figure, whatever. I said, no, I don't. I don't have time for that. This is where my, my time is spent. In the Word. I want to know the truth, so that's why I stay there. Verse 9, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ hath both the Father and the Son. So if you don't abide in, it says here, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. If you don't stay in, in the gospel, if you, if you go beyond the scripture, if you, if you go beyond what's written, don't have Christ. If you're adding to the gospel, taking away from the gospel, you obviously don't know him. You know, Jesus said that um, his word, right? His word is, is his spirit, his life, his word is he doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The doctrine that he brought you, where did it come from? Where did it come from? Well, let's look at John chapter 7. Let's go to John chapter 7, verses 16 and 17. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but is his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. What he, what he gave to us was what the Father gave to him. He communicated the the teaching from you know from God and so what we're judged by is the word of God this is what he's going to use to judge us you know is the word so it, it's, it's it's like vitally important that you don't add to the word you don't take away from the word you know it's it's an error it's an error when you do that when you when you start going into adding to the word you know Taking the word and trying to twist it around to meet your way of thinking, you know, that's all deceptive. It says, whoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. So if you don't, if you don't look to Jesus Christ as, as the only way. Now, not just that, but that Jesus Christ was born on this earth. He was born sinless. He had no sin, Right? He was 100% God, 100% man at the same time. He died on the cross willingly for us. He gave his life in obedience to the Father for us because for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. On the third day, he rose again, right? Conquered death. And that he's coming back 
Again, he, he ascended to heaven. He's coming back again. Now, when he ro he rose the third day, he ascended to heaven, but that was 40 days later. Okay, so make sure that you don't think, oh, it's just that same day. He just, you know, he rose from the dead, saw the disciples, and ascended. No, it was 40 days, and there were 500 witnesses of this. Right? He ascended to heaven. And the same way that he ascended, he's coming back. And that day is coming soon. But that day is held in the Father's hand. Only the Father knows the day or the hour that Christ will return. We just know that it's soon. And so until that time, we abide in the doctrine of Christ. That without Christ, you cannot get saved. Without Christ, there is no, there is no heaven for you without Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him, but through him. So, if you don't have the doctrine of Christ, you don't have God. Plain and simple. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have God. You can be talking about God all the time. You can be praying seven times a day. It does not matter if you don't have Christ Jesus, you don't have God. What you do have without Christ is a false God. Because if you don't have Jesus, you got anything else. You got the God of the, the Mormons or the God of the Jehovah Witnesses or the God of the Islamics or the God of the Buddhists. Buddhists say they don't have a God, but they worship Buddha, so, you know. Oh, we don't worship Buddha. Yeah, you, I, I've seen you. I see, I've seen these guys crawling on their knees, burning incense in front of a giant golden Buddha. That looks like worship to me. You can deny it's worship, but it sure does look like worship. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. So you, the inseparable, okay? They're inseparable. So you have to, if you have the Son, you have the Father. You can't have the Father without the Son. So inseparable there, okay? Jesus came to the earth. He was in the flesh. The Gnostics were denying that. But he was. And he wasn't Palestinian, okay? He was Jewish. I know there's a whole movement out there today that think they're saying that Jesus was a Palestinian. He was not a Palestinian. He was Jewish. He's born in, he was from the line of King David. Jewish. Okay? Verse 10 says, If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. So, if somebody comes to you and they're knocking on your door and, they, and they're bringing another gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Another, another, not this, but another, don't receive them. The, the Mormons do that. That's why they call the Book of Mormon another, you know, gospel, another testimony. Wait, it, it's not another. <clears throat> It is a false teaching. The Book of Mormon's false. It's it, it's leading people to hell, and these are people trying to live morally upstanding lives, but without Christ, it's all legalism. You know. You need Jesus. Jesus will change you from the inside out. Then you're not le living a legalistic religious. Life, you have a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You're not supposed to uh, receive them into your house. So you don't have them, you don't invite them in to have a Bible study and you're going to debate them. And you're not supposed to do that. You can go outside and talk to them and say, look, you need Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. You search for him in the scripture, you go find him. Point to the truth. Don't bid them God speed. God, you know, meaning God be with you. You're not supposed to do that. Because they're following another, a, a different gospel. They're following a different God. A God of the Bible. God of the Bible is not going to have you go out and make, make you a God and make you run your little planet with spirit babies and stuff like that. I, whatever the, the crazy teachings they have. 
That's not what the Bible teaches. Stick to the Bible, okay? You're fallen man or fallen woman. You need Jesus Christ. If you want eternal life, you need to repent of your sins and trust him. That's it. Thank God he offers grace and mercy and love and kindness and compassion through Christ. Outside of Christ, you have the wrath of God to anticipate and to wait upon. Because that will come if you don't know Jesus. It's a simple, it's a simple message, but it's so full, right? It's so full. So don't be on the outside of Christ. Don't, don't be on the outside of the ark, right? When the flood came, that was not the place you wanted to be. And when the wrath of God is poured out on this planet, being outside of Christ is not where you want to be. You want to be in Christ, right? <clears throat> it says, if there, any, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. For he that biddeth him God's speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. So by wishing them God's speed, God bless you. You're a partaker of their evil deeds. Randy didn't say that. The Bible says that. So be careful. You're not to encourage false teaching, false doctrine. You're not to encourage people to stay in false teaching and false doctrine. Right? Point them to Christ. Point them to the truth of the Word of God. You know, this is one of the things that's amazing to me is, is you can ask these guys questions and what's interesting is they've taken the words that we would use, right, in talking to people from the scriptures, and they reinterpret these words. So when you're asking them, have you repented of your sin, they, re, they, reapply, they apply a different definition to those words. And so then, then they can say, oh yeah, well yeah, I have. But they haven't. Because they've, re they've reinvented the definition. And this is like what the emerging church has done. The same kind of thing, where they, they redefine words. And so words that have a simple meaning, no longer have a simple meaning because they've redefined them. So are you born again? They're like, yeah. You know, tw twice last week. <laughs> You're like, what? What? They've redefined the words. And this is why I, I use, um, sometimes I'll use like uh, a Webster's, like 1828 dictionary. I use that uh, on words, you know, showing uh, what the definition used to be versus what modern definition of the words are, sometimes they change. And so you have to understand that. And you also can go in your Bible to Greek and to the Hebrew and to Aramaic, and you can take a look at what the word says there. So you get an understanding, a full understanding of the meaning of the word. Okay, read that word. Okay, I got it. This is what the Bible's teaching here. Uh, why is that important? Because in modern language, I mean, you, emerging church, they were trying to understand what truth was. They didn't even know what truth was. They didn't understand it. Why? If you say you're a Christian, right, then you should understand what truth is. You should. Because Jesus is the truth. And the way. And the life. Right? So, <laughs> you know, you read that stuff and, and you see these guys having a struggle with just... The, the most basic word it's it's not because they don't understand it it's because they don't want to understand it they don't want accountability so if by pretending in their own heads that they don't understand it then they can try to somehow uh, shirk responsibility for it but that doesn't work it doesn't work. The Bible says whatever you you sow, that shall you also reap. So if, if you're sowing sin, you reap destruction, right? 
we're not supposed to be doing that. You know, there's righteousness in Christ. There's everything that you could ever, ever imagine to, that, you know, I'm talking like peace and love and and the joy that comes from God for eternity. That's all of that's in Christ. I mean, the world is scrapping for that, you know, for peace. They're looking for peace. They're looking for love. They're looking for joy. They're, they're looking everywhere you're not supposed to look. And the one place they should look is to Christ Jesus. And they don't know. And that's why the church has that responsibility to point people to Christ. Point them in the direction they need to go. I want you to understand it's much like how you and I came to Christ. It's like a person who is in... Um, who's blind being led by another who can see to a safe destination you know you can see because you're in Christ they cannot see because they're in darkness still and Jesus yes Jesus is the answer so yeah you have to get out there and tell them. If you don't tell them, they're going to continue to wander around blind. You and I were doing the same thing. We were wandering around, didn't know where we were going. The light of the gospel was introduced to us, and suddenly, you can see. When you come into Christ, you have life. You have it more abundantly. You have you have light because Christ is the light. He's the light of the world. His the scriptures give us light, give us understanding of what's going on in the world. And if we stay grounded in this, we don't get all caught up in the all the the darkness that's out there. And there's so much of it. There's so many things that Satan is trying to do to lure you away from Jesus. And you've got to be on your toes spiritually. You've got to be in the Word of God. Even in the early church had to confront this with the Gnostics. And they confronted it again and again in Scripture. And you will be confronted with false teaching, false doctrine stuff in the, in the last days. It's going to be like that. But you got a responsibility to stay grounded in the Word of God, to, to give the love of God to a lost and dying world. And don't give up. And don't get sidetracked. And don't get caught off guard. You should be, you know, Nehemiah, when they were building the wall around Jerusalem, they had, they had gotten word that the enemy intended on attacking them while they were building to catch them off guard, you know. So when they were building, they had one hand had a weapon and the other hand was doing the work. We still have that today, right, guys? In the gospel work that we have to do, in one hand, we have a sharp two-edged sword, which is the holy word of God. In the other hand, we're working, reaching and leading people to Jesus Christ. Working in God's field. Never let go the word of God. Always, always holding on to the word. Now I know we have shield of faith and I know we have the rest of the armor of God. Thank God for that. But you know, all things that were written in the word were to give us an example. You know? And I think that sometimes we get, um, we get away from the word. I see, I've seen good, uh, well, I've seen Christians well-intentioned getting sidetracked today and I guess it's easy to do because once you get away from the word of God onto the word of man that's what's going to happen you're going to get led all kinds of crazy directions because that's what man is if you stay grounded in the word of God his word doesn't change you know men try to change the word right that's why you have so many 
false uh, modern translations of the Bible that are not uh, great. They're not great. Because they change the, the intent, the word. And that's why it's very important for you to stay, stay with a reliable translation of the Bible in your language. If your language is English, you know, stay with a reliable translation of the Bible. It's very difficult because some of the modern translations are uh, not as reliable. And so be careful. Is Satan trying to deceive people? Oh, yes. Yes, he is. And he's quite successful at it, unfortunately. If you can watch a show, a movie, uh, that any one of these ones that Hollywood puts out, you know, uh, and, think, and walk away from that saying, oh, wow, that was wonderful. It was such a great movie. It was you know, about the Bible or about Jesus. If, if you walk away from that thinking that, or if you saw the if you saw the Noah movie and you walked away thinking, wow, that was just a wonderful movie, then I'm going to tell you, you have definitely been deceived. Um, stick with the Bible. Don't add to the Word. Don't take away from the Word. Okay? Um, get back in God's Word. And in spend time studying it because deception is a real thing and it's happening today. And, and, I, and I'm mentioning it a lot tonight. I know that. But it's very important for you to understand that you must stay grounded in the Word of God. Um, Hosea talks about, I, I talked mentioned it the other day, famine of the Word. I'm going to actually get that verse for you real quickly here. And um, let's see. No, it's in Hosea. Let's go. Oh, wait. Is it Amos? See? That's why it's good to study. Amen. Let's go to Amos. We'll bring the scripture up. Okay. We'll go ahead and turn to the book of Amos right now. And as I'm bringing this up, eight... Amos chapter 8. Ah, uh, yeah, verse 11. It says, uh, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. You know, I mean, I understand um, people looking, you know, looking. At, you see it today. You see it a lot. People still running around coast to coast, going to these meetings, different meetings, looking for a word of the Lord, a word from the Lord for them, rather than opening their Bible in their living room, right? They want to go to somebody who's got a special word from God for them. Well, a uh, special word from God to you is called the Holy Bible, and you need to get in there and read it and find out what he has to say. Famine, of, a famine in the land. You know, nothing would be worse, I think, than a self caused famine right where you're starving because you're not doing something about it like you have the word of god which is your is it's more important it's your necessary food it's your it's man should not live by bread alone but by every word of god right so instead of opening the word of god there's people out there spiritually dying you know spiritually just starving because they're not getting into the word and they're not reading it and it's evident when they jump completely onto the bandwagon of all of these crazy teachings that come out today. You know, they just jump wholeheartedly onto it. Amen. Yes, that's what we're going to do. And, they, and they've abandoned the word. Abandon it. And it's, it's very important for you to not do that. Get in the Bible. Make it a part of your daily life that you're reading every day. You spend time in the Word, so that way you can, when those false teachings and stuff get introduced to you, you're like, oh man, no, that's that's not right, because I just read this in the Scripture. The Scripture says this. 
you the, when the Gnostics come up and offer their <clears throat> false teaching, then you can point them exactly where you need to point them. Talk to them about the birth of Christ. Talk to them about Mary having the baby, you know, wrapping him in swaddling clothes, right? And laying him in a manger, right? He physically came here. That he died on the cross. He physically died on the cross. These guys, um, the Gnostics were messed up. And so the, we read, read so many of the uh, apostles were confronting that Gnostic spirit that was alive in that day. And that Gnostic spirit is still around today. Uh, a good demonstration of the Gnostic spirit that's in the, in the church today is the Word of Faith movement. A very big example of that. And uh, I hope that I hope that you spend some time in God's Word today and the rest of your life, like every day, getting into the Word, not refusing to like put it down. I mean, I understand you guys sleep sometime and stuff like that. I'm not saying like that, but I'm saying that every, each and every day you've given God's Word, this is what you're going to going into his word, remembering the fact that Jesus is coming again. Let's go back over to um, to Second John. John says here, verse 12, he says, Having many things to, to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face, that our joy may be full. You know, um, there's a lot of stuff that, like right now, <laughs> even for us, you know, we can speak. We can speak to one another because even in this venue right here, um, I'm talking to you about the scripture, right? And some people actually posting comments here. I can see the comments as they come up as you're posting those things. So if you have questions, sometimes I'm able to answer those. And this is a good, it's a good uh, substitute for until the time where we can physically be in each other's presence there. There's also other software available today too that, uh, you know, you can do this and that's actually... Um, you can have meetings and things like that. It's very, uh, very awesome what God is making available to, to churches and, and to Christians to be able to do things. Um, yeah, also, you can call any time. I had a, had a discussion with someone today, you know, trying to... Uh, I will tell you this, that if you get off track and start posting some crazy stuff, I will, uh, I will confront that with you. I'll talk to you about it. Not in that you know, adversarial kind of, I'm going to go after you, but I'm going to ask questions. And I think that's what you're supposed to do. We're supposed to be looking out for each other's souls. Amen. And so, um, if, uh, if I get off track, I want you to do the same thing with me. Same thing, please, please. If you see me get off track on anything, please confront me in a spirit of love. Please do it. Amen. Man, we need each other. I can tell you that right now. The church, we need each other. There's no one going to get through this on their own. It does not work like that. We have to depend on each other. We have to trust one another to continue to encourage each other in the scriptures. That's what we do. Amen. We're, we, we love each other enough to tell each other the truth. Right? Apostle Paul says, am I now therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? That is how we need to be telling the truth. Sometimes the truth hurts. Amen. Sometimes it's like, ah, got me there. That hurt. But it's for our own good. Chastisement from the Lord is for our own good. It helps us. It helps us to grow in Christ, become closer to him, become more like him. And God says that he those that he loves, right? He, what does he do? Chastens, right? Doesn't want us because we are so prone as human beings, so prone to error, so prone to getting off track. We are aptly named, uh, you know, like sheep. We are aptly named, you know, and Jesus Christ is that great shepherd. And he carries that staff, the rod, right? And a staff, rod to correct us staff to protect us thank god for that he's always looking out for us he's interceding for us at the father's right hand and i'm going to tell you that's pretty powerful when you remember that who's praying for us right now amen 
Isn't it awesome to know that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is interceding for us until the time the Father sends him to come get us? Are you looking forward to that day? The return of the Lord Jesus Christ, our being reunited with him, are you looking forward to that day? Oh man, I am. I'm looking forward to that day. I'm so thankful and grateful to the Lord that he has blessed us with life. Not just this temporary life that's just fleeting and it's going to vanish away real soon, but eternal life in Christ. And that means everything. So keep focused. Mission, 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 mission. What's our mission? Preach the word. Preach the gospel. Not our opinions. Not what our political parties say. Not what the news, Fox, CNN, ABC, NBC, CBS, and, or BBC, or whoever. Not what they say. Not what our special commentator, political you know, analyzer says, but what does the word of Almighty God say? That's what we preach right here. Preach this. And don't stop. Until the Lord calls you home or until Jesus comes. Stand on that word. Be unmovable in Christ. Stay firm. And don't ever give up. No matter what's going on in the world, just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thy will be done. Amen? Well, okay. Well, we're going to end a little early tonight. I pray that uh, God will bless you and keep you. I hope that you will be able, Lord willing, that uh, you'll be able to tune in tomorrow night with uh, Trevor Baker at 5 o'clock. And we'll do Encouraging Word broadcast right after that. I love you guys. I thank God for you. You... Um, you can do this with Christ you can do all things right I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me so no matter how uh, rough the road gets that's not the times I'm actually uh, you know I don't like unpleasant times I, when those things happen I, I don't but those are the times that make me kind of like oh boy what's going on the times that do is when everything is good when everything is calm, when everything is good, that is the time I'm going to tell you right now from personal experience, pray hard. <laughs> I'll tell you when everything is going well and smooth and calm and there's like no storms on the horizon, you better get yourself grounded in some prayer and be praying because storm is coming. That's the time. So when a person doesn't have at the when there's no adversity the the natural tendency of of people is to get lax and that is not good for us we need to be on our toes because we have an adversary that roams around seeking whom he may devour and he doesn't really ever stop he may let you think that he stopped but he's not stopped his, his goal and mission is to destroy you. That's what Satan does. But thanks be to God that we have a Savior who is looking out after us, protecting us and keeping us. Amen? If you love him, keep his commandments. All right. Enough said. God bless you. Have a great night. I love you guys. Keep us in prayer. We're praying for you. God bless.